And now, Michigan Reimagined with Chris Buck. So, whether you're a fan of our fabled Detroit Pistons, our beloved MSU Spartans led by the legendary Tom Izzo, or any other professional college basketball team, you are in for a treat. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about the fact that Lansing is getting its own professional basketball team. Here to discuss the launch of the Lansing Pharaohs is the founder and president, Mr. Chris Jackson. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm excited about this topic because um, these are the types of stories that make a town unique, right? And, uh, you know, we chatted a little bit offline about the impetus of all of this. And uh, I just think it's, you know, best kept secret. And that's not a business strategy. So I want to give you a platform to talk a little (laughs) bit about what we're doing here. So big news. So tell me about the league. Lansing's joining an existing group or is this a whole new league that's being founded? How's that work? You got it. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm not doing well as a sports business. People (laughs) don't know about me. Uh, So uh, the Lansing Pharaohs, uh, we are a part of the TBL which is the basketball league. The basketball league has been around probably for about five or six years now. Um, It grew from 16 teams to 30 teams across the country right after the pandemic, right? Because players didn't have outlets anymore. So they didn't have anywhere that they can go play internationally. And so the the, the league really grew. Um, And like I said, it's about 30 uh, or so teams across the country. Folks like, uh, for, for you basketball fans out there, Steve Francis, who used to play for the Houston Rockets, owns a team in Houston. Uh, Kendrick Perkins, who's on ESPN all of the time, just bought a team in Beaumont, Texas. And so uh, it's a league uh, really just focused on being a showcase league. So there's um, 24 to 30 games over the course of a season uh, from March through May with the playoffs starting in June. Wow. OK, yeah. so a, a late winter early spring season right after march madness right so for all of the michigan state folks out there you can just transition to a different form of basketball you know okay there you go (laughs) so how did the prospects of a lansing based basketball team begin yeah so actually the the reason how this all came about in the first place is is i'm actually part owner of multiple cannabis outlets uh so i'm in the cannabis industry and one of the big things for me is culturally like debunking a lot of the myths that exist, particularly athletes using cannabis, right? Okay. Professional athletes in particular. And so the, the goal was to for our company to theoretically be the sponsor of the entire league. Um, now, while the TBL is a progressive league, they weren't quite that progressive. Okay. So, so <laughs> right. CBD, they've done sponsorships for, but they weren't quite in a space where THC, you know, those yep. type of companies made sense. Um, but there was an opportunity to take on a market uh, in Michigan. So Michigan had two existing teams already, and the league was looking at growing, you know, following this past season. Uh, so they asked if I would be interested in taking on a market, and it, it was between uh, my hometown uh, in Metro Detroit. Okay. Uh, or somewhere out west. Um, and then basically Lansing was the decision, but I think we'll get to that. So, okay, yeah. wonderful. All right, so you know, I'm glad you explained some of the background as to how you got involved, but it, you, you know, it usually takes a lot of collaboration to pull this kind of thing off. Absolutely. Is it your company that's kind of helped you get to this point, or did you have other people that kind of helped you get on this ride? Yeah, so, so the company for sure, uh, Sticky Cannabis Operations, right? We, we will certainly be a sponsor okay. of the team. Um, but aside from that, you know, how it all came about was actually, you know, my, my goal is never to go into a community without the community support. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to be an asset to what's already a thriving community, uh, because I don't like when people come into other places and say this is what you need. Right. right, right. Uh, and so I ran for state rep uh, some years back. Uh, and started to build a good, pretty good rapport with uh, Rep. Sarah Anthony. Okay. Uh, and so reached out to Rep. Sarah Anthony, and I just say, I got this idea. I want to kick around with you. Um, you know, we could do it in Metro Detroit, but um, I, you know, Lansing has a a very traditional basketball background, a rich one at yeah, that. Right. Um, would there be any interest? And so, you know, she put me in touch with the likes of of Des Ferguson um, at Moneyball, and, and you know, once he said, you know, we'd love to support and. And, and be a merchandising partner, reached out to some folks like Tony Willis mm-hmm. at the, the Leap organization. Yep. Um, you know, um, importantly, uh, Mayor Andy Shore yep. uh, gave his support. And, and then, um, you know, even Mike Price from the Lansing Sports Authority. And so once I had that nucleus of folks, I think, that wanted to, to support it, um, from there, it was just like, you know, let's go. So about six months ago, we had our first press release and we've been off to the races ever since then. Yeah. All right. OK, so now who are these players going to be? Are you going to have local tryouts for folks or yeah. are they coming out of schools? Is there a draft? How does that work? Uh, yeah, so all of the above. Right. Uh, so usually our sweet spot is is. 21 and up so let's just say between 21 and 31 you either have players who coming out of college weren't quite 
good enough to play in the NBA yet yep. or uh, players who have been on the circuit for a little while uh, and want to just transition into a quote unquote less competitive level of basketball. Right. And in terms of where we fall in terms of competitiveness, you know, you have the NBA, you have the G League, right, okay. which is the feeder program into the NBA. We fall probably right underneath there. So we'd be considered kind of a double A program if you if you know the minority system in, in baseball, right, 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 right. Uh, and, and we're a showcase league. So uh, to answer your question, yes, there will be some players local. Um, you know, the goal is actually to have you know at least fifty percent of our players to sixty percent be from the Lansing region, if you will, between yep. Michigan State players potentially that graduate and don't have anywhere else to go or, or want to continue to play or or players here um, that just didn't get a look for whatever reason. And so absolutely, um, we, we're hoping to make it a hyper local regional um, type of team atmosphere community. Well, these players probably have other like day jobs or is this going to be something where they're training all year round and on trying to get their way into higher paying professional basketball gigs yeah yeah i think it really depends on where they are in life right so there was a a a guy who who's done a lot on the professional circuit who's playing overseas right now can still play at a high level but has two young kids here in michigan right and 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 doesn't want to be overseas necessarily anymore so starts to look at a league like the tbl right where you may not get paid as much but you can certainly still get paid and make a living from it right right Uh, or you have young players who are super interested in making it to the next level, and our goal is to promote them. I mean, this past season, the TBL promoted between NBA Summer League and G League and uh, overseas teams, probably about 24 players um, just from this past season have been you know, promoted or going on to play professional basketball at different levels. So, Got yeah. it. Okay. So uh, yeah, you mentioned how many games there will be. I mean, you said 24 to 30, yep. still kind of hammering out that schedule. So it. is it normal to expect that about half of those will be home games? You got it. Yes, okay. Sir. Yep. And uh, so where's the team going to play? What kind of capacity is there going to be? Is it going to be broadcasted? How's that all work? Yeah, so we're going to be playing at the renowned uh, Don Johnson Fieldhouse, where, where Lance and Easton plays currently, right? Um, okay. So beautiful facility. The floor was just redone. Uh, fell in love with it the first time I got there. So shots out to the Lance and School District for being willing to take on a partner like generally that hasn't been the case at least I don't think in the past for okay. the Don Johnson Fieldhouse specifically so it'll be kind of our their first take at it and it'll be our inaugural home right uh, for the upcoming season so um, Don Johnson Fieldhouse seats about 3,200 people wow uh, all right it's bigger so, than I would have guessed yeah you got it so so plenty of space we'll, we'll have some VIP court size seating we'll have press box accessibility and so um, for us it's e- even if we you know pack out the house with half of that um, we're still doing really well so Okay. Yeah. All right. And is it going to be uh, on the radio? Or are they going to do any uh, TV uh, coverage uh, uh, for those who uh, can't to, attend? Or to, how are you going to work that? To be determined. Okay. Um, there, there, there are talks right now about us having some um, potential to be on TV on Saturday nights in particular. Okay. Um, but those those details are still being worked out. So. Understood. Yeah. And I'm not. Hey, I'm just asking. It's all good. Right? No, it's good. <laughs> People it's a great are going to want to know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, where do you get tickets? So. Today, um, they'll be online. It hasn't launched yet. Uh, right. It's a March kickoff, right? Exactly so right. we're recording this in September, so we're months and months away oh, from you, the season. You, you right? got it. So in, in October, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have our final schedule released by yep. the league. And then from there, we'll be able to determine that we're, we're working out where our physical ticket distribution partners are going to be ultimately. But yeah, sure. At the very minimum, you'll be able to access them online on the LansingPharaohs.com website. So, Got it. LansingPharaohs.com, everyone. You got it. Check it out and <laughs> learn a little bit more there. All right. So I got to ask. Yeah. So the, uh, the economics of mm-hmm, this, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so you're talking about paid players. Yep. I'm sure you're some compensation to get, you know, people and, you know, the, the, to rent the, the facility. Yep. Um, you staff. know, you've got staff, yeah, you've got yeah, trainers, yeah. you've got all that kind of stuff. And then you've got ticket prices. I mean, I, I mean, I know you're just kind of kicking off your first season, but is, do you rely on sponsorships and corporate gifts and things of that to yeah. kind of make up the dis- di- you know, difference? Because it seems to me that the sale of tickets is not going to cover everything that it takes to field a team. Well, you know, if it, in, and to your point, you know, the way that the league is constructed, like there is a, a buy in into the market. Right. So in order to own a market, you you have to do a buy in. Um, OK. And I think that that just keeps everyone honest. And I think it makes sure that there's a the best product possible that's being put on the on the floor every every okay. night, right? So there's that first piece of it. Now buy it, and so you're talking about just 
putting capital. Exactly. In. To, to just yep. on the market. That's, yeah. So that's by itself, right? Yep. Okay. Um, to your point, even at, you know, let's say the tickets cost 15 to $20, because our, our goal is to make it affordable for right. families Accessible. who are local. Right. Exactly yeah, yeah. right, right? I mean, we, we love the Pistons, uh, but to go to a Pistons game, you're talking about driving two hours, having to pay for parking, having to pay upwards of $100 per ticket. Right, all right, those right. Things, right. So, at, at fifteen to twenty dollars, though, a ticket, even if we were at half the capacity from an economic standpoint, we'd make enough to cover all of our expenses over the course of the season. All right. Um, not the best business decision, though. So we're certainly right. taking on corporate partners yep. um, because what we offer, I think, is the same as what most businesses want access to in terms of who our audience is right and so especially in a basketball town like lansing um so from an economic standpoint corporate partnerships is 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 the focus in the preseason or off season um but we should be okay just by way of selling out half the game economically right yeah so i'm thinking about you know putting my feet in your shoes you know i would imagine you're talking to other minor league basketball owners to say, well, what don't I want to do? What Absolutely. do I have to do? Mentorship, right? Absolutely. Learning all the ins and outs. But from a local standpoint, have you reached out to the folks that say the the lug nuts or, or uh, we had a soccer team here for a Big year? And, yeah, yeah, you got yep. it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, are you reaching out to try to get some help in all this? Absolutely. I, I mean, part of it was, you know, and Tyler, who's the GM at the lug nuts, yep. right? right? He yep. and I have spent a lot of time together just understanding the local market, but understanding it's a different sport. Right. Right. And, exactly, and, and right. understanding yep. what's the appetite here in Lansing for basketball. And you, you remember Des Ferguson, I think he took the year off last year, but they were doing pro ams where they would have higher competitive players come and play for a couple of days or whatever the case is. And it would sell out every right. single time. Right. So I think the appetite is there locally. The question is, can we put the right product together? And it's not just the, the players on the court. Right. right. It's it's the entire production of it all. <laughs> and I'm learning quickly, right? Because as a as a fan, you go from being entertained to having to understand the business of right. basketball. Um, and, and so to your point, um, I did a tour all of the course of the last season, Kokomo, Indiana, the Michigan teams. I went to Atlanta um, just to see who did things really well, mm-hmm. uh, who did things that I, I think could be better, and then really build it as a blueprint or a foundation for what we're doing with the Lance and Pharaoh. So absolutely. I, I started this journey probably last February or March okay. uh, and just took the year just to understand how do we put the best product on the floor? Okay. Yeah. Now, early on in the show, you mentioned a couple of Texas locations for this, uh, the TBL. Yeah. Uh, you just rattled off a couple of more local. So is your team going to do a lot of travel or are you playing in a division that's mostly kind of upper Midwest or you how's got that going to work? Okay. Yeah, you got it. So, so the, the team will probably grow, not the team, uh, the league will probably grow from 30 teams to 40 to 45 teams by okay. the time that the season starts. Uh, so there'll be another, you know, there's currently two teams in Ohio, four in Indiana, two in Michigan with three including us okay there may be a couple of more in illinois and in indiana and so it'll be pretty local with the exception of probably one weekend where it'll be an east coast or a south or a west coast travel weekend got it okay so it'll be like the nfc north you got it <laughs> you'll have a, <laughs> That's a local squad you know you which got which has got to be economically exactly n- right. necessary yep. right and then you hit the playoffs and right then you go down and play out of these other teams that exactly are right the when, when it makes sense you got it all right you got it so how many people are you going to field how many people are going to dress on the pharaohs i mean how big is your roster allowed to be yeah no no more than 15 players okay uh, no more than 15 players will probably taper off at four, 14 or so um you know 11 to 12 uh getting minutes and then maybe right. some reserves outside right. of that right um but there will be to your point tryouts all over the state uh in the coming months uh and then there will be a combine draft uh in february that the league does in indianapolis um okay. and then from there training camp starts in february and then we tip off in march wow okay yeah coaching you got a coach yet we do coach scott newman uh, okay. for me you know one of the things that i found is this league is really competitive usually five to seven points is a differential between the games okay so having good experienced winning coaching actually matters right Right. it's not always the case but in this case it does um so from that perspective scott newman he he won a couple of championships in the canadian league uh in years prior and to me it was really he's out of detroit but it was really important that i brought someone that has won in the past but you know uh ronald banks um 
there are Daryl Scott. There are a couple of local Lansing guys who have already signed on to be on his coaching staff. Um, and so it was really Mo, Mo Benson is is a player coach. Uh, a lot of people may know Mo Benson from his time at Everett. He's played the the pro circuit for a while now. And so we have a really good nucleus of guys, um, both outside of Lansing, but even from within Lansing, to help us bring us together. Right on. Yeah. Well, I get the benefit of taking a look at your logo and your shirt. Uh, and Moneyball is a wonderful choice that you've made from ah, a partnership absolutely. on apparel. Yeah. Uh, talk about the the origins of the Pharaohs as a brand and yeah. the colors and things. We we chat a little off line about this but i think everyone should hear about it no for sure so, so for you know I, I am a fan of mascots and royalty you have the, you get the kings the monarchs the royals like those yeah. are ones we've always heard there wasn't always you, you know uniquely representation maybe even from the eastern hemisphere right and, and i never knew why yeah and so the pharaohs as a form of royalty in its own right uh was a unique mascot to professional leagues at least here in america uh, so that's where it stemmed from originally, uh, colors black and yellow, um, but then we added the purple for royalty, and then a la, you have the Lakers colors. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> um, but, but you, you know, in, in doing some research, though, the earliest use of the word Lansing was actually in, in a, a form called the Papyrus Lansing, uh, which was used by a fifth dynasty pharaoh, um, and, and the meaning of it was theoretically or, or essentially what it meant to be a, a scriber and why it was the most noble thing you could be. But regardless of, of the reason for it, the use of the word Lansing was way dated back to ancient Egypt Pharaoh. Huh. Um, and so it kind of came together serendipitously in that way, but uh, it just let me know that it was confirmation that we should go with the with the mascot. So, right on. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic. I like the Thank logo. You. I would like to remind everyone to take a look at the LansingPharaohs dot com. Yep, is that right? Mm -hmm. Uh, can we talk a little bit about the corporate partnerships? Have you um, are the, do you have any partners that you're willing to share? Or is that all still kind of it's being worked through? Yeah, to your point, it's being percolated outside of, of Moneyball, obviously. Right. Yep. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's being percolated right now, and my marketing team would kill me if I made announcements before. Sure, <laughs> sure. No, I get it. I get um, but, but no, you, you, I, I, I would expect, you know, it, the reason it works is because businesses, you, you know, sure, they could do business with the G League teams or the NBA teams, but, you know, most of the small businesses or corporate partners that we talk to here, they are hyper focused on how do we get people from this region to come to our store? We aren't a national brand, right? right so, right. you know, being on national TV sure is nice, but is the money worth it? Is the yield, the output there? Every game, we're going to have 1,500 to 3,200 people, hopefully, that right. are going to be there, that are going to be local, that are going to visit these these businesses, right? And so um, I'd be excited about some of the ones that are coming. We're just inking uh, a few deals. So, I understand yeah, completely. Yeah, so is the school district going to allow you to keep some of that branding up, or are you going to need to kind of do a quick change uh, it, I, in between I, home I, games? It, it'll be, um, luckily, we'll be playing in their off season, quote unquote, right. for sports, in, indoors at least in the gym. So I think we'll be able to keep some of the branding up. We have a really cool relationship, partnership with the school district. We'll be giving them 50 to 100 tickets okay. uh, every game nice. for students uh, to use for incentives or for other reasons um, and then what we'll do is make sure that not only our team and staff part of our our team's uh contract will be community engagement right Perfect. they won't get paid without it so right. so for us and our community partners we'll be going into the schools building a relationship with the schools but we'll also expect 50 to 100 kids at every game so yeah well, I, I'm in my, I, I admire what you're doing. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful for the investment you're doing into the city of Lansing. It sounds like a tremendous amount of work, but if everything turns out the way you're pitching it, I think it's going to be just a really uh, big success. Appreciate it. <laughs> and then you're going to get a lot of, you know, the, the, the community involvement, the students, yeah. you know, and, and give people a place to make money doing what they love, playing a, playing a child's game. There you go. You can't All be right. mad about that. <laughs> Chris Jackson, the founder and president of the Lansing Pharaohs. Stay tuned for more information. Thanks LansingPharaohs.com. Thanks.